ಹಲೋ ಲರ್ನರ್ಸ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ವಿ ಟಿ ಯು ಇ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಂ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರವಿ ಕೆ ಎಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಕ್ಯಾನಿಕಲ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಆಟ್ ವಿದ್ಯಾವರ್ಧಕ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ಇನ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಟೂ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ತ್ರೀ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಎ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕಾಂಪೋನೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೈಡ್ರಾಲಿಕ್ ಸರ್ಕ್ಯೂಟ್ ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಪಾನ್ completion of this session the student shall be able to describe the working and construction of different types of pressure control valves and flow control valves the student shall be able to identify the graphic symbols used for pressure control valves and flow control valves firstly we shall discuss about pressure control valves pressure control valves or the safety devices that protects the fluid system from dangers of over pressures this may happen either due to gradual pressure build up or due to sudden rise in pressure next what are the types of pressure control valves so in this we have number 1 pressure relief valve number 2 pressure reducing valve number 3 pressure sequence valve first we shall discuss about pressure relief valve so the pressure relief valve as the name itself says that you are going to release the excess pressure to the tank so the pressure relief valve or the safety devices which will protect the hydraulic system from over pressures when the pressure in the pipeline increases above the set level so then excess pressure is diverted to the tank so here you can see adjustable screw cap so with the help of this and we have pressure setting spring so we can set the line pressure or the working pressure of the system so a to this a stem is attached and to the at the end of the stem ball is attached so the ball remains in its seat so it is normally closed type of valve so wherein the ball is seated in its position now the ball this is the pressure in the pipeline so the ball will sense the pressure in the pipeline and if the pressure in the pipeline is less than the spring setting pressure so then the ball remains in its seat and suppose if due to some reasons when the pressure in the pipeline is increases and it is above the spring setting pressure so then the ball moves away from its seat so here you can see a hidden line is shown so the ball moves away from its seat and excess pressure is diverted to the tank so when the ball remains in the same position until the pressure in the pipeline reduces and it is below the spring setting pressure and afterwards the ball will move back and it will block the port opening and uh, normally it will be in closed position so here you can see the symbol for the pressure relief valve so a box is shown a square is shown so within the square a line is offset from the center and then you can set the pressure with help of this pressure setting and adjustable screw cap and this is the line pressure this line pressure is sensed by the ball and here the excess pressure so it is this is connected to the tank here the excess pressure is diverted to the tank so here when the line pressure or the working pressure increases and when it is above the spring setting pressure so the ball moves away from its seat and then the excess pressure is sent back to the 
tank. So this is how a pressure relief valve works. And this is the corresponding symbol and this is the constructional details of a pressure relief valve. Next we shall discuss about pilot operated pressure relief valve or compound pressure relief valve or two stage pressure relief valve. So here there are two valves. This one is the main valve and this is the pilot puppet valve. So in the main valve it consists of a piston and onto the piston an orifice is provided and then to the piston a stem is provided and here a spring is also provided so that it will keep the piston or the stem in the closed position. So it is again normally closed type of valve so where this tank line is closed due with the help of this spring. And with the help of the adjustment screw cap, you can set the line pressure. So here the puppet, it remains in the closed position. So normally it closes this port opening and here if the pilot spring here with the help of the adjustment screw, you can set the pressure in the pipeline. Coming to the operation. So high pressure oil enters at this location and it will move over this RFIs and it reaches the pilot line. So this puppet senses the pressure in the pilot line and when the pressure in the pilot line is less than the spring setting pressure, so the puppet remains in the closed position and the oil pressure above the piston and oil pressure below the piston will be the same so that the piston will be hydraulically balanced and it will be in this position that is it closes the port opening. Now when the pressure in the pipeline increases that is the pressure in the pilot line is more than the spring setting pressure so the puppet moves away from its seat and some portion of oil is drained to the tank. So when some portion of oil is drained to the tank so the pressure above the piston reduces but the pressure below the piston will be more so that because of, the, of this hydraulic imbalance so the piston will move away and then the stem will be raised and excess flow is diverted to the tank. So this is how a compound pressure relief valve works. So I am now I am going to play you a video which is taken from YouTube and the link for the same is mentioned over here. You please kindly watch the video which is taken from YouTube. The pressure relief valve is one of the most important types of safety valves. This type of valve sets a limit on the rise of pressure within a hydraulic line. In normal operations, the valve is closed and no fluid passes through. But if the pressure in the line exceeds the limit, the valve opens to relieve the pressure. This protects expensive machinery such as motors, pumps, and actuators from becoming damaged from high pressure. The pressure relief valve is one of the most important types of safety valves. This type of valve sets a limit on the rise of pressure within a hydraulic line. In normal operations, the valve is closed and no fluid passes through. But if the pressure in the line exceeds the limit, the valve opens to relieve the pressure. This protects expensive machinery such as motors, pumps, and actuators from becoming damaged from high pressure. Without a relief valve, pressure can continue to grow until another component fails and pressure is released. Pressure relief valves fall into two categories, direct acting or pilot operated. 
A direct acting relief valve is held closed by the direct force of a mechanical spring. The spring force holding the valve closed is opposed by the system hydraulic pressure. The cracking pressure is the minimum pressure at which the valve will begin to open. This pressure is set by changing the tension in the spring using an adjusting nut or knob. As long as the system operates at a pressure at or under the cracking pressure, the valve remains closed. If the hydraulic pressure increases even a small amount beyond this level, the valve begins to open and fluid begins to trickle through. The pressure at which the valve is fully open is called the full relief valve pressure and is higher than the cracking pressure. When the hydraulic fluid in the system reaches the full relief valve pressure, the valve will be fully open and all fluid is discharged through the outlet port. A pilot operated relief valve makes it possible to handle higher pressures and flow. It's also much smaller than direct acting valves rated for the same pressure. This valve has two stages. The first stage is composed of the main valve with a poppet and spring large enough to handle the maximum flow rating of the valve. The second stage is composed of a much smaller direct acting pilot valve which includes a pilot relief poppet, pilot spring, and an adjustment knob. This smaller relief valve is usually mounted crosswise on the main valve body. As long as pump line pressure is less than the relieving pressure set on the control knob, the pilot poppet will remain closed. Since the pilot poppet is closed, the pressure in the main spring chamber is the same as the line pressure. Since these pressures are equal, there is no pressure drop from one side to the other, and the main poppet also remains closed. When line pressure increases higher than the relieving pressure, the pilot relief valve moves to its open position. This allows fluid to flow from the pressure side through the orifice and across the pilot relief valve to the tank. Once the pilot valve is open, there is now a pressure drop across the main valve poppet with a higher pressure on the pump line side. This causes the main poppet to move, allowing full flow through the relief valve. The same is true in reverse. As the pump line pressure decreases below the relief pressure set by the adjustment knob, the pilot valve will close. This allows the main spool to close and restores a balance of pressure. Relief valves can be used anywhere in a hydraulic circuit where it's necessary to prevent pressure from exceeding a maximum level. Advantages of direct acting valves are their low cost and fast response times to pressure spikes. Pilot operated relief valves are advantageous due to their smaller size and ability to work with higher system pressures and higher flows. Okay, thanks for watching a video on pressure relief valve. So, which is taken from YouTube and the uh, link of that has been mentioned over here. The pressure. So next we shall move on to pressure sequence valve. So pressure sequence valve is the modification of pressure relief valve. So in a pressure relief valve, excess pressure is sent back to the tank, but in a pressure sequence valve, the excess pressure is utilized so that you can see over here in the symbol he is utilized to carry out some other operation in a hydraulic system it consists of a spool free floating spool a primary port this one is a secondary port and with the help of this spring the spool will remain in this position that is where P is not connected with A port P is blocked and here with help of this adjustment screw and the spring pilot spring setting pressure so you can set the pressure 
of the hydraulic system that is the working pressure of the hydraulic system so that because of that the puppet remains in the closed position so normally it is closed so on the spool a hole is provided so when the flow high pressure oil enters at this location so past this hole on the spool will be sensed by the puppet and when the pressure here in this pilot line is less than the pressure setting spring so that the spool will remain in this position that is port p will be blocked now when the pressure here in the pilot line is more than the spring setting pilot setting pilot pressure setting spring so the puppet moves away from its seat and then because of that reason the pressure in the pilot line reduces which will be less than the pressure below this on the other side of the spool so the spool will lift because of this hydraulic imbalance the spool will be lifted and the excess flow is diverted to the other parts of the hydraulic system to carry out some other operation in the hydraulic system so to generate the symbol so draw a square and within the square since it is normally closed a line is shown which is offset from the center and with help of the spring you can set the working pressure and the line is drawn over this that indicates you can vary the pressure that's the system pressure or the source pressure setting and the puppet it will sense the pressure in the pipeline and when the pressure exceeds above the spring setting pressure so that the puppet will move away and then the spool will be lifted and the excess flow so this is p and this is a the excess flow is diverted to other parts of the hydraulic system so this is how a pressure sequence valve is used to carry out uh, the pressure in a stage to utilize the pressure in a stage by stage so next we shall move on to pressure reduce so what is the function of a pressure reducing valve so the name itself says that pressure is reduced why we need to reduce the pressure because this pressure reducing valve is used to maintain reduced pressure in specified locations of hydraulic system it is actuated by downstream pressure and tends to close as this pressure reaches the valve setting so here you can see there are two figures shown so that gives you the operation of a pressure reducing valve so wherein it uses a spring loaded spool to control the downstream pressure so coming to the construction the valve consists of a spring chamber with an adjustable spring to set the pressure as required by the system a small opening is provided in the spring chamber to drain the oil that can be that will be collected due to leakage so thereby preventing the failure of the valve a free flow passage that is the bleed oil passage is provided through the valve from inlet to the outlet with respect to the operation as long as the pressure in the downstream is 
below the spring setting pressure the spool remains normally open and allows free flow between the upstream and the downstream when the downstream pressure exceeds the valve setting spring pressure the spool under this pressure moves partly to the right so thereby partially blocking the flow to the outlet so there will be a continuous flow through the bypass and the bleed hole in the spool to the spring chamber leading to the drain line hence this flow prevents the spool valve from closing completely and always it will help to keep a reduced pressure in the downstream and you can see the corresponding symbol for pressure reducing valve so here you can see it is a square is shown and the line here which is in line that is the line is not offset from the center it is in line with the system pressure so that indicates pressure reducing valve is a normally open type of valve so that it will be sensing the pressure and then the at some specified location the pressure will be reduced or it will maintain the reduced pressures so next we shall move on to flow control valves what is the function of a flow control valve so the purpose of a flow control valve is to regulate the flow rate of fluid in a hydraulic system so this in turn is used to control the speed of the actuators so in this flow control valve we have simple needle valve non pressure compensated flow control valve and pressure compensated flow control valve so firstly we shall discuss about simple needle valve so this is the simplest type of flow control valve wherein the valve seat is a variable area orifice and a matching valve needle is connected to the adjustable screw knob the opening between the needle and the orifice can be adjusted turning the knob by raising or lowering the valve stem and the needle needle valves are used as manual control valves in fluid systems so that requires good metering operation so in this case metering is nothing but it refers to the control of fluid rate leading the speed control of actuators so by varying the area of orifice you can vary the flow you can regulate or you can meter the flow from a to b so it's a one directional type of flow control valve so this is the corresponding symbol for flow control valve so a arrow is shown that indicates you can vary the area of orifice and you can vary the flow across this opening so next we shall move on to non pressure compensated flow control valve so in this 
non pressure compensated flow control valve it is a simple needle valve and can it can it contains an integral check so that such valves can be used to control flow in one direction while they can allow unrestricted flow in the reverse direction so the valve has a variable needle valve in the flow direction and also it has got a check valve which is normally closed which is parallel to the flow direction in operation so flow can be regulated using the needle valve in one direction while the path through the check valve remains closed when the flow from the opposite direction is required so with the needle valve closed the check valve opens and allows unrestricted flow of the fluid thus such types of valves can perform dual functions both restricted and unrestricted flow rates in the opposite directions so here you can see the symbol for non pressure compensated flow control valve so flow in this direction free flow in this direction will occur so flow past this is not possible because the check valve closes and unrestricted flow in the opposite direction is possible so in this case the check valve moves away from its seat and the flow is made to pass via this opening port opening so this is the corresponding symbol for non pressure compensated flow control valve now now we shall move on to pressure compensated flow control valve so in this pressure compensated flow control valve so this figure shows you the operation of a pressure compensated flow control valve so the design incorporates a hydrostat that maintains a constant pressure across the throttle so which is an rfis area can be adjusted by an external knob setting so the rfis area setting determines the flow rate to be controlled so the hydrostat is held open by a spring as inlet pressure increases it closes so this closes opening through the hydrostat and blocks off the flow in excess of the setting next to summarize we discussed about construction and working principle of pressure control valves construction and working principle of flow control valves and different valve symbols and these are the references so fluid power with applications by anthony esposito oil hydraulics by s r majumdar hydraulics and pneumatics by andrew par and uh, this is the link so wherein i have played a video which is taken from the youtube so thanks happy learning thank you